Angie, I want you to talk a little bit about your special project in Orlando. Are you okay with talking about that on my podcast? I would be honored to talk about that. Um, yes, I would be I'm, honored to talk about I, that. I'm going to... I'm going to preface this with a mascara alert <laughs> because when she shared this story with me on the phone, I probably wept for, gosh, how do I put this? I wept for your loss. I wept for your daughter and her sweetheart. And I wept for your just pure ability to harness your energy into such a lovely project. And I can't wait for you to share it with us. You're going to make me cry. You're going to make me cry. Okay. I'm the first one. I'm the first. <laughs> no, no. Oh, so girl. Almost every episode of this podcast, I've cried, laughed. We've gone through the gamut. So again, we're giving you hugs, honey. This is a project that I'm so grateful that you brought up. I, I didn't, I didn't anticipate talking about it here but I'm so grateful to have the platform to share it because it's it's a really a story about love coming full circle. Back in 2004, I was working for a massage warehouse and I had a baby. I was 38 years old. Oh, there goes my age. You can do the math. There it is. I, I, I had a baby and she was premature. She weighed a pound and four ounces. She was littler than your cheeseburger that you had for lunch. That was Olivia, and and Olivia was the joy of my life. And I feel like because of Facebook and other social media outlets, other philanthropy pieces that I've done throughout my career, I talk about her, and she was such a big part of my life. That this whole community, you know, if you've been in it for a minute, you may know about my daughter. And and she was she was a, a ray of light. She really was. But when she turned four years old, she was diagnosed with brain cancer. So on top of being premature and ridiculously delayed, then she got the double whammy and had brain cancer. So fast forward, 13 brain surgeries later, countless trips to the ER, countless doctors, countless therapy. She fought hard, hard she fought for 17 years and I lost her. She died in my arms. I know that's when her spirit left her. Her body left her. The body left later, but her spirit left when she was in my arms. And that was on December 13th, 2021. And so I, understandably, my husband and I have been just grieving and trying to find the sense in it all and shaking a fist at God, which is not the right thing to do. Shaking a fist at the world, which is not the right thing to do. It's easy to get mad. It's easy to be mad. The, the true test of character is what you do with that. You know, you can sit there and be a miserable POS or you can figure out how to turn that into something. And I didn't know how I was going to do that. I wasn't even in the headspace of doing that. And then a friend of mine called and said, hey, I got a buddy in Florida that's open in a spa. Do you think you can help them? Well, yeah, of course. That's what I do. Of course I'm going to help. So I, I get on the call and we're talking and he says, my name is such and such, and I'm with a place called Give Kids the World, and I, I work out of Orlando. Well, as love would have it, and I used to say as luck would have it, but I'm pretty sure it's as love would have it. I had to tell him to stop talking. Don't say another word, not one, because I got to tell you my story. My daughter was a recipient of a Make-A-Wish in 2010, and we stayed at this amazing village that is built for special needs children and children who are having illnesses that are, are beyond the pale, right? That are challenges that no child should have to deal with, certainly no family. And this village is an amazing place of hope and, and love where you go and you spend seven days as a family. And that seven days you get to spend Halloween. You can have Christmas. You eat ice cream for breakfast. All of the rides are accessible for all kids. If they're in a wheelchair, fine. If they're on a gurney, fine. If they can walk, fine. Everybody, everybody gets to play, right? The pools are all zero entry. There's 79 villas. So they have at any given time, 79 families that are on property that are there, that are taking 
you know, taking their turns at the parks and, and doing all the things. And nothing at this place cost the family a dime. Nothing. From the food they eat to the games they play to the rides they have to the place where they lay their head at night, nothing cost them a penny. This is all handled through foundations, through wish foundations, through corporate donors, through private supporters, through you name it, people with the kindest hearts and donations have have contributed. So I knew firsthand what this place was all about. So I didn't even let him finish his sentence. I'm like, you just you just can't talk anymore. I, I have to tell you about Olivia. Olivia's favorite place on the planet was Give Kids the World. And if you've been there once and you can get back there again the following year, you can come back and get a day pass and come and experience again. Well, I, I had many trade shows in Orlando year after year. And for the years that she was healthy, she would come back with me down there. And and her and she and her father would go to give kids the world and spend the day. It was her magic place. It was the place that Olivia flourished. She could do everything that the other kids could do. She wasn't different there. And she she just enjoyed life. So, so much so that she wanted to go back when she we, we would come home. She goes, well, I want to go back to my real house, my real place where I really live, you know? And, and I'm like, okay, so we, we've got this house here, but this is not where she lives. In her mind, her home is Give Kids the World. So fast forward, they say we're trying to open a, a spa wellness center for the caregivers. And that's what we're doing. So I share with them my story and I'm like, whatever you need, whatever I can do, I'm in. I'm 100% in. I couldn't be more in because I could just hear my daughter in heaven hearing God say, I'm going to do something and give kids the world. Maybe I'll open a spa. She sat beside me for 17 years hearing me open spas from home. For how many thousands of spas have I opened? I, I don't even know. So I think if there's two sentences in her world that she recognized, one was open a spa and the other was definitely give kids the world. So when she heard those things, I, I, in my mind, she's running over to God and saying, my mama, my mama is who you need. My mama is the one you need. So I feel like this has been divinely brought about on so many levels. I could go on and on about all the God winks that have come as a result of this. But as I'm talking to this gentleman on the phone and telling him my story, this beautiful female voice came on the line and I didn't really, I didn't even really know that I was on a speakerphone. And she said, what was your daughter's name? And I told her it was Olivia. And she goes, well, then it's settled. We're going to name it Olivia's Oasis. Y'all, I mean, to be brought about to Olivia's favorite place in the world to open a wellness center, which is what I've spent my life doing. And then to have them be so generous as to name it in her honor. Is there anywhere else I'd be? Is there anything else I'd be doing? No, no, there's not. So they said, can you come down here and visit the spa and visit the space? I said, of course I can. Where do you hear this, guys? I said, when would you like me to come down? They said, December 13th. Do you think you could come down? I said, yes, of course I can. Of course I can. Because I wasn't driving that bus. That that greater power is driving that bus. And he's got a little bitty co-pilot named Olivia. And fast forward again to December, the minute that she died, I was standing at Give Kids the World, Night of a Million Lights, standing in front of Santa Claus that was 30 feet tall in her favorite place in the whole world, working to open a spa that has been named in her honor. And I just feel like this is just love coming full circle. My daughter was nothing but love, nothing but love. And she would show that to humanity any chance she got. We would go to stores or the grocery store or the mall or whatever. Inevitably, she would find the very person that you would never want your special needs child running up to. And, and, and you would say, please, stranger danger, stranger danger, don't go over there. I, I, the first couple of times I stopped her from doing it. And then I realized, no, 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 no. That's what she's here for. Because she would run right over to that person, throw her arms around their neck and say, you know, I love you. Aww. That's it. And inevitably that person, more times than I could count, would just burst into tears. Because she knew somehow 
in her special needs world that that person needed help. That person needed to feel love. And, and she, in her little way, gave it freely without wanting anything back. Just other than to get a hug. That was her thing. So for all of this to come about and for now there to be a facility that I have, I have the opportunity and, 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 and the blessing to be a part of that's going to come about to care for these caregivers of these children at this village who are working so hard to make the seven days that they have at the village, the best seven days that that kid has ever seen and that they will ever have in their life. And they'll remember it till they're a hundred years old, you know, God, God willing, they're going to remember it for the rest of their life.